But they always, so for those four years, and they still paint you as a bad, bad guy. Mm -hmm. They paint you as a bad guy because they have the influence and they have, they have the media and, and you don't? Mm -hmm. You can't get on the media? Oh, I get on it, but it's, it's not very effective because their narrative, they're always going to tailor their message to the narrative. I give you a prime example. Last Friday, the Oversight Commission had a hearing. Last Friday. And they said I created a secret police that I was targeting my enemies. And oh, they they're had, after you in 2024. Oh, my God. This is 24. It's, I've been gone for two years now. Yeah. And they're still after me. And we actually investigated allegations of crime. That's it. And... We didn't care who it was. If there was an allegation of a crime, we investigated mm -hmm. it. And that so upset the Oversight Commission because one of the commissioners was one of those ones who investigated, and a supervisor, Sheila Kuehl. This was an investigation about a, a fraudulent contract. And we had a lot of information about it. Other agencies didn't want to touch it because they were afraid of the board. Not because it wasn't a legitimate complaint. And we took it at face value, investigated it, and oh my God. Well, two years later, they're still trying to demonize me over it. So they interviewed the detectives on the stand on Friday, the Oversight Commission. And the Oversight Commission told them, or the deputy, one of the deputies told them, yeah, the Attorney General's office uh, did not allow their investigators to see the evidence. And the attorney general says, there's no evidence to, uh, to prosecute. Gosh darn, so sad. But their own investigators threw the attorney general under the bus when he said they never looked at it. They were never allowed to look at the evidence. That is huge. And it was not reported by a single news outlet. Major piece of information like that is like, didn't Nothing happen. to see here. Nothing, Nothing to see here. Move on, folks. But man, that former sheriff, he had a secret deputy, he had a secret police force. And they kept ha hammering this, oh, the secret police, the secret police, alleged secret police. It was so secret, we put it on our website. <laughs> we put it in writing to the board, hey, by the way, we created this unit to investigate public corruption. That's how secret it was. That was the problem. But you see how easy it is for the media to manipulate? And why is the media manipulating things? at the behest of county government. Why? So at this moment, 2024, you hopeful or hopeless? In your case, let's take your case. Uh, what well, do they're doing with you? Well, we know what they're doing. Their goal is to make sure I never run again for office. That's, uh, they're afraid of me. Office, you mean any position or sheriff? Well, sheriff is their worst nightmare or board of supervisors, whatever the case may be. They're trying to paint as ugly picture as possible of me with every resource they have. It's all fake. They just don't care because they are that afraid of me being an elected official. And people don't wonder why? So people don't ask too many questions. They look at their phone and they do this. They read the headline and that's as far as they go. But I believe that's, that's part of the reason is because the system is so difficult to acknowledge, to understand. So on the ballot this November, you're going to have how many positions? Dozens. Oh, yeah, there's, it's a big ballot. How do, you, how, how, do you think, how do they think they get to know all the candidates in their district for, for who to vote for, proposition, vote yes or no? It's not only the president, right, and the VP. It's dozens of positions. Oh, yeah, the, the ballot's going to be thick to get through it. Mm -hmm. So hopeful, hopeful or hopeless? I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. There, there's, uh, the bad guys are going to get their day. Their time is running out. You get elected in 2018. The, the, first month you, you, the first month you get this, I want to say, a stabbing, right? In the, in the, in the back. How did it affect you, your life, your wife, uh, your sleep? Well, it was, it was stressful because we were doing the right thing all along. And I even explained to the board exactly why we made the decisions we made. They just didn't care. 
because for them they were going after the the uh, soundbite the hashtag me too oh look at what he did knowing that i was actually correcting a wrong mm. uh, they didn't care but it, it was an eye opener to show how how evil these people are so prior to that you you knew that there was a corruption but not well, that big not not that not to that scale i knew some of them were were questionable but i didn't know that they would go to that length to try to get rid of me i mean basically lawfare like what they're doing with donald trump mm -hmm. except i haven't broken any law of any kind but it doesn't matter to them did he see this is the part it's hard to say because he's involved in so many things i don't i don't know what the real evidence is mm. and what is just trumped up by his political opponents because they've wa muddied the water so much that i don't i can you know give you an honest answer because i don't know what the evidence is so trump said that once he got into the office in 2016 he didn't even realize realize how how deep the deep state is and how how corrupt the system is so for you it was it's the same thing right you you knew right. that there was corruption but the but the scale of the corruption oh, yeah. it just amazed you it amazed me because they were so devoted to getting rid of me and like with the jail in the LA Times the LA Times was like the scribe for the board of supervisors everything wanted they run an article about it we found that from 2013 to 2018 jail violence was growing exponentially they had a 204 percent increase in inmates assaulting staff Two. staff yeah. not each other no staff 204 percent increase that's like you know sound the alarm button right never heard it until i came into office 99 percent increase in deputies using force on inmates obviously because they're getting assaulted 31 percent increase in inmates assaulting each other so all three categories major increases from 2013 to 2018, which coincides when, when Jim McDonald was sheriff. Where was the articles in the Times about this? No, they decided he was a reformer because he was part of the Citizens Commission on Jail Violence and he replaced Lee Baca, who was a, who was a criminal, so it's all good, he's a reformer. They said, no, he's not. He screwed the whole thing up. Not only that, we were losing deputies left and right because he wanted to fire everybody and let the Civil Service Commission figure it out. That's not leadership. Well, you can, in some way, you can call it even Lenin or Mao or Stalin a reformer as well. They wanted to reform the country. Oh, yeah. They, oh, not yeah. every reform is good. Yeah. You, 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 lucky if you live the reform, right? Live through yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, like with Mao. How many lose? Like 26 million or something? Oh, no, more. More? Stalin, Stalin uh, killed 20 million of his own people. Mao, they say, up to 50 million. That's true. His yeah. own people. His own people. So, McDonald, he uh, ended up uh, authorizing 400 terminations in four years. 400. What is that? Terminations. The step of firing an employee. Mm -hmm. 400 times. I did 165 in four years. It's the same organization the same policies, same people. So how did he do more than twice as many as I did? He fired people he knew could not be fired, but he figured that, well, the Civil Service Commission will give them their jobs back later on, and I can't be blamed. He literally said that, which is the worst thing you could do possible because you're admitting that you're gonna destroy someone's life so you can look better for the press, and then when they finally get the job back three years later, they're angry, bitter, divorced, maybe lost a house and all that stuff behind it. That is just horrible. Luna is doing that right now. The exact same thing. How big of a push did you have when, you, when they told you that you have to enforce vaccinations? In well, I told Chicago. them I was not going to enforce vaccinations. Man, they lost their mind. They tried to go to court. They tried to say make the case that, well, they have the authority to terminate my employees, and they don't. I have that authority. And they could not accept that. And, and ultimately, we didn't lose a single person. But it, it convinced enough deputies to say, you know what, 
screw this county, let me start going to another county. And they did. We lost, uh, we lost uh, you know, a number, it was noticeable, that started to leave to Ventura County, to or San Bernardino, to Riverside, Orange County, all the surrounding counties that didn't have vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm. there was, hey, come work with us, we won't fire you. But you didn't fire them as well. Why did I you didn't fire them? Just because the news broke up and they... Well, they were afraid of, of one of the threat always being under the gun and the lack of support from the Board of Supervisors. People just got tired of it. 